tell from the title and thumbnail and intro of this video. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you all the new um, mineral sunscreen from The Ordinary. I've gotten many requests to review this sunscreen for you guys, so here it is. Um, and you just saw me put it on, okay? I put on a good sized amount, about um, half a crown cap bottle full. And if you're curious about that, check out my, um, my sunscreen video about uh, how to apply sunscreen, why sunscreens fail. I go over the actual amounts that you need. And um, about half a crown bottle cap should cover the entire surface of the face and neck to get you to a density of two milligrams per centimeter square of surface area roughly, which is the amount of sunscreen that you need to apply in order to achieve the SPF labeled on the bottle, which in the case of the ordinary sunscreen is SPF 30, all right? The Ordinary Sunscreen is a mineral exclusive sunscreen. It has zinc and titanium dioxide in it. These are both um, sunscreen ingredients that physically block ultraviolet light and they offer good coverage against both UVB rays, which are the rays that directly damage our DNA, cause a sunburn, and um, also contribute to skin cancer. They also, these, these sunscreen ingredients also block against UVA rays from the sun, which penetrate the skin more deeply, damage collagen, and lead to wrinkles and fine lines. So this is a broad spectrum sunscreen, SPF 30. It is not labeled as water resistant, um, and it uh, is touted to have uh, sort of a no-nonsense formula. The Ordinary as a brand I know is very, very popular. I always get requests to review some of their products. When they came out with a sunscreen, people were, you, you guys really wanted me to review it. Um, and so this particular one retails for, I believe, $9.70. It's, it's less than $10 on the website, but then, you know, obviously you have to pay for shipping and handling. And uh, it is cruelty free. And it also touts itself as having um, antioxidants in it. In addition to in addition to the sunscreen filters that block the ultraviolet wavelengths, it, it has antioxidants in it, namely from, from a variety of plants and plant-derived oils. Now, antioxidants in sunscreens theoretically have some advantages and impart some advantages to the sunscreen in that they can help theoretically scavenge free radicals that are generated in the skin um, as a result of ultraviolet light hitting our skin. However, um, it has been shown that Free, that the free radical scavenging ability of antioxidants in sunscreens is virtually nil, simply because antioxidants are very unstable. And so it's it's a little bit of a, it, it is a gimmicky selling point, all right, to put antioxidants in sunscreens. So don't be misled that that is really offering this sunscreen anything more. Its selling points are that it is a mineral sunscreen and that it is broad spectrum. So it will protect you against a burn and if applied properly and you reapply it every two hours while you are outdoors, uh, you will protect yourself from a burn and you will protect yourself from those harmful rays that penetrate deeply and age and rage the skin. Now, you know, you guys want to know how, how it does, okay? So this says that it is suitable for all skin tones, all right? Um, and I've read on the reviews that it leaves no cast whatsoever. I am pretty fair complected because I really, really avoid the sun. Um, you know, there, there are certainly people out there, those of you with red hair are probably a uh, fairer than I am. But, you know, for me, putting this sunscreen on, I've had it on now for several minutes. You can see it leaves a pretty substantial white cast, as is the case for most mineral sunscreens that contain zinc and or titanium dioxide. That is usually what consumers complain the most about. And many sunscreens get around doing this by nano-sizing the zinc titanium dioxide. However, people are concerned about the potential harm for nanoparticles to the coral reefs. And so in an effort to get away from this, the ordinary is using a micro-sized zinc titanium dioxide in their formulation, um, which, uh, you know, still gives you that white cast, all right? This is not cast-free. And as far as the plant-derived extracts that this contains, it has rosemary leaf extract in it. 
It also has this other plant that I had never heard of, Tasmania lanceolata, which um, I guess is uh, anti-inflammatory. It's a shrub, I believe, from a native to Australia. So they have put that in there. And I, I believe that's what they're touting to be kind of the antioxidant type ingredients in this. But do you know that with plant-derived ingredients, there's always a potential for molecules that are the same as those that occur in fragrance. There is always that potential for that. And therefore, in my opinion, plant-derived extracts and oils, you know, they they really can offer the potential for, for harm, for problems in the product for the consumer. All right. They just they're just they're just a slippery slope. Uh, whether or not they actually scavenge the free radicals, doubtful. Um, they're more likely to to cause problems. But you know, not not like they don't stand out as, as huge problematic ingredients. They've done this interesting thing with this product in that they have this like matrix shield they're talking about, like wherein they have the zinc titanium dioxides kind of entrenched in this this polymer network mesh. I mean, I really think they they overextended themselves in the formulation of this because it's you know, it, it doesn't really do anything as far as applying applying it. It doesn't really make it any more user friendly than any other sunscreen. So, you know, I applaud their effort, but I don't really think it did anything <laughs> to the product just as far as the use. It feels really sticky going on. But yeah, as far as the way they have formulated this in this kind of, um, you know, different matrix, <laughs> I call it a matrix, but it just, it, it's almost like a meshwork or something that they created um, and it makes this like polymerized film on your face. It's not water resistant, but I'm surprised because this is, this is adherent as adherent can be, all right? It does not budge. It holds up as far as staying in place really, really well while, while you are working out. It holds up really well in sweat. Um, and for example, I have worn this comfortably while running on a treadmill, while running outdoors here in Houston where it is very, very hot right now. It's the middle of summer. It is very, very humid. And this stuff did not budge. I still had a white cast after an hour long run in the heat, okay? So this stuff stays in place. I'm surprised it's not water resistant. You know, I did not repeat obviously the, um, the what's called the MED testing for the SPF before and after running. I don't have the means to do that, nor do you. So I don't know how well the SPF holds up after that much sweat and running and, and exercise, but the white film is still there. Sweat, but it really stayed in place. And importantly, for those of you who are outdoor enthusiasts and work out a lot in sweaty environments, this stuff, um, not only does it not sting around the eyes, okay? You'll notice I put it around my eyes comfortably, no problem. Not only does it not sting or, or burn around the eyes, which is a location you need to be applying sunscreen, by the way, uh, for protection against skin cancers and aging, but it doesn't run into your eyes. That that can really be uncomfortable. You're running, you're sweating, and sunscreen's you know dripping into your eyes, it burns, it's a pain. So this does not do that. It really stays in place miraculously. I am surprised it is not, not labeled as water resistant. It, um, you know, people I think would enjoy this or people who are out outdoors for a, pro for a prolonged period of time uh, in a sweaty environment or working out in like an enclosed gym, I think you'd be okay with this. You do still need to reapply it every two hours while you're outdoors and it is, because it is not tested as water resistant, um, you're gonna need to choose a water resistant sunscreen if you are if you are in the water, if you are a surfer. My original thought was that with this is like, maybe this would be this would be good for like a surfer or something, but I don't believe it. It's not labeled as water resistant, so that would not make it a good choice in that sense. As far as how it feels, however, it feels really, really, really sticky. Um, like almost like you have, almost, it's very viscous and it feels almost as though you have like a, a thin layer of honey on your face. Um, it really feels sticky and tacky. You all know I don't wear makeup, so I did not, I've not, you know, attempted to apply makeup obviously over this. I can't imagine that it would go on well whatsoever. It is, this stuff is very, very, very tacky. 
um, and feel sticky. It feels as though you have on, it feels as though you have on one of those honey masks or like a little bit of corn syrup, something like that. Where I think it will be a problem for outdoor enthusiasts, if you are working in a very dusty place or somewhere with a lot of pollen or arrow allergens, it you know this this will capture that this will capture little little particulates in the air and can really be can really be kind of sticky icky. Um, I personally did not do not enjoy wearing this sunscreen whatsoever. This uh, disclaimer is probably my fifth or sixth time. I've really given it numerous tries before reviewing it to you all in different environments to to get a good sense of how of how it, what it wore, you know, what its its lasting power was, how it, did it beat up, um, and I, I personally am not a fan of it. It does not pill up like some of the other mineral-based sunscreens you will encounter often do. This does not do that. It stays, it stays like a film on your face, just like that. It does not pill up, um, you know, under under things. I put it on over other sunscreens, went on over other sunscreens fine. I have reapplied it several times while being outdoors and that white cast doesn't, doesn't fade, uh, but it doesn't pill up with reapplication. So that's helpful. Um, so I didn't enjoy wearing it. And you know, it's touted to be affordable. It's about $10 for this bottle. But I don't really think that this is offering you a whole lot over what you can get at the drugstore as far as mineral sunscreens for babies that are likewise fragrance free and actually are water resistant mineral sunscreens. They're, you know, for this cast, you're better off just going going to the store and getting getting one. There are cruelty free um there are cruelty free brands available in the in the grocery store that are mineral exclusive sunscreens. One in particular that I think is a far better value than this for for what you get here is the No AD Babies Clear Zinc. Um, still gives you a white cast like this, but it's water resistant. I believe it's SPF 50, cruelty free, coral reef friendly. I mean, all of the things that you know, environmentally speaking, um, are 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 there. Um, a much better value. I think it's like I think it's a similar price for a much bigger bottle, and uh, you know that goes a lot further. Personally, uh, you know, I love Aveeno Baby. I'm not certain as to if that is cruelty free. I believe it's not, but that is a great choice. Vanny Cream um, is another phenomenal mineral-based sunscreen that is also a good value. And then another cruelty free mineral sunscreen for those of you in Canada, and you can get it out in the United States easily on iHerb. I guess anyone can get it on iHerb, is the Attitude um, Mineral Sunscreen. This actually doesn't leave a cast. It is cruelty free and vegan, by the way and it goes on quite sheer. If you'd like me to review this in the future, I will. Here is a box. But to me, you know, this offers a little bit more. It doesn't leave, it does not leave that cast and it is non-nano, okay? So for those of you seeking a non-nano mineral sunscreen with the cruelty-free, um, you know, cruelty-free status, vegan, this one's vegan, zero nonsensical ingredients, um, very moisturizing. I think this is a much better choice. It's not water resistant, but uh, it is a much better choice than this, okay? Both SPF 30s here, um, I, I personally would go for this. Um, it just blends into the skin better. Let me know if you'd like me to review it. Not a perfect sunscreen, but definitely better than, definitely a better choice in my opinion than this. I just did not enjoy, I just did not enjoy wearing, I do not enjoy wearing this. I mean, it is, it is very, it's very casty, all right? If you are a darker skin type, this is not going to be socially acceptable for you to wear. I can't imagine that you you are going to like this. Knowing my audience, knowing people that comment on my videos, I can't recommend this, all right? I don't think it's a good value, and I don't really think it's offering anything over a basic mineral sunscreen marketed for babies. Um, so I don't really think it's... I, I, I mean, I you know, I don't I don't really think it's worth it or a great cost savings to you. It's not necessarily a bad sunscreen um, because it is so adherent. This thing is stinking hard to get off. All right, I have never had so much difficulty removing a sunscreen as I have with this. All right, I that's why I'm surprised it is not water resistant because I kid you not, I had to do I've had to do three cleanses with this. 
um, with uh, Hadalabo cleansing oil, CeraVe hydrating facial cleanser does not get this off. Did not remove the white. Get out of get out of the shower and I've still got white on my face. This stuff is really, really difficult to get off. It is the end of the day here. Um, I just got home from, from my day and I'm about to go to the gym, all right? So I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna sweat, and then I'm gonna get in the shower and <laughs> I know it's going to be a battle to get this off. I've had such a hard time removing this sunscreen uh, from my face. It, it's it's really hard to get off. So if you don't have sensitive skin, when you take this off, you you know it, it might leave you with sensitive skin. It is that it is that tenacious, right? So not necessarily a bad thing. Not necessarily a bad thing. You know when you you want your sunscreen to stay in place and not budge, that's what you want. Um, you know, it's really it's really a challenge for a company to come out with a sunscreen. They've got to go through a lot of hoops and barrels. We've got to make sure that it meets um, standard standardizations. So, you know, I applaud them for trying, but I think they should tr continue to try and keep putting out sunscreens and improve upon those. So that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping to see from the ordinary is keep up the work. You're not there yet, okay? Not there yet. This is not something consumers are. Largely, at least people who watch my videos are not largely going to going to enjoy. It is not suitable for all skin tones. If you are darker complected, you ain't gonna, you're not gonna want this. You're not gonna be able to go. If you work in an office, people would be like, no. All right, this is very Phantom of the Opera. So yeah, I hope this review was helpful to you guys as far as deciding if you're going to buy or not. Comment below on if you have and if you've used it, what your experience was. But you can see I have been filming this video now for a while, um, and there, it's it's not going anywhere. I mean, that cast is not. It's not fading. It's not drying. I haven't even reapplied it or anything. I'm pro you know. I mean, I've been talking to you guys the whole time. So yeah, I mean. I don't know, this, this could be the look you're going for, and if so, I think you're gonna be happy with it. But if it's not, which the majority of you who comment do not like this, um, don't, say, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> All right, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.